Ahoy hoy everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Zalman VF3000A um, GPU cooler. There's a slight difference between the A and N. If you have an NVIDIA card, of course, you would go for an N version. Uh, this particular model will fit Radeon 5830, 5850, and 5870 cards. and we will be putting it on the Monster HIS Radeon 5870. A few years ago, this was the fastest single GPU solution you could get. While it's not the top of the pile anymore, it's still my trusty video card, and it looks cool. It's definitely something that's very 60s Batman mobile, Batmobile esque there, and. I'm not going to show you an unboxing with this because really if you need a tutorial on how to open this then maybe uh, you shouldn't undertake a task this far since this, I'm not sure, uh, I don't really care since my card's old, well more than out of warranty anyway, that this could void your warranty. So it's something that always check about. I know a lot of manufacturers are more lenient on aftermarket cooling because it you know, prolongs the life of your card if done correctly. But um, actually, back to this uh, stock cooling system, uh, you have what look like intakes on the. It's actually the inside edge of the card, and they actually don't do anything. You have the big turbine motor here, which is if anyone owns any of these. Um, cards, you will definitely know that this thing is loud if, at full tilt, and it, it will rarely do that, even uh, when you're getting your card hot, uh, specifically with uh, this cooler and my not-too-good gaze that uh, doesn't ventilate very good, which is something we will be doing later on with a different case review. Uh, this won't actually hit 100% with this. Uh, stock drivers. It, um, this card specifically, the reason we're doing this, uh, it will thermal throttle at 95 Celsius. So yes, this card is insanely hot and I've tried multiple uh, recodings of the thermal paste on the inside and different um, thermal pads for the RAM and it doesn't really help too much. The I, I, I know with uh, some people, like just a coating of Arctic Silver 5 will be good enough, and that's actually what I've been using the last few times I've had to reseat the heat sink, but none of it really seems to be working, but it could be because I am in a new location compared to where I used to be, and while it is winter, uh, or it's fall really, but we're experiencing winter type weather, it has still... Uh, a heat issue out here, so that's something that, you know, definitely need to take care of, so gaming and longevity of the computer will last. But looking at everything we got, we have uh, the actual heat sink, which is a big behemoth, uh, with five heat pipes, copper heat pipes, in it. And something I wanted to point out on here was, this is actually in a uh, blister pack type thing, you know, with uh, the two halves, which you would think that's pretty protected, and overall, like, it doesn't look damaged at all. Yeah, you know, it's actually got a nice little film of oil on it to help protect the metal. But uh, I noticed this when I opened the package. You have your free flowing 92 millimeter fans, and Oh, I got that one broke loose, but you can hear it's rubbing on something in there. Plus it was stuck, one of the blades was stuck on the upper edge up here. So that's something definitely have to check into before put power into this, because you don't want that uh, striking something in there and breaking apart, let alone you'll lose half the functionality of the heatsink. Um, so definitely don't want to do that. Everything that comes in the package, we have their... Uh, in-house thermal grease here, a package of candy. No, I'm kidding. If you if you think this is candy, then you should probably not do this either. Um, we have 
our fan control uh, dial here, which hooks into your motherboard header on one end and into the heat sinks fans on the other. The directions specifically state they want you to stick this onto the outside of your case, and besides that being a pretty tacky solution, uh, I'm a fan of either integrating your fan control into, if you have your own system, hook it into that or into a expansion slot type deal like I have with my uh, CPU cooler. So I don't know if I'm even going to use this because I'm just not too big of a fan of this setup here. Got your uh, little case sticker, so you know, got, got to show off your shiny bits, right? And three rubber washers, the uh, FET heatsink, which is pretty big, and it's got the holes in it for these spring-loaded pins, which is how it's going to be retained onto the board. Uh, the directions also say there's supposed to be seven type A heat sinks and one type B. No, uh, oh no, I got that wrong. The one type A and seven type B. For some reason I got eight. We'll see if there's a typo or if I actually uh, only, you know, because I'm cool, I get an extra one or something. Um, have your plastic washers, some uh, springs for the retention on the actual CPU. Uh, or the GPU uh, mating surface, the pins we spoke about, some O-rings, the threaded deals for attaching your board and card together, and your thumb nuts so that you can do this, not, not toolless, but you know, it'll be a pretty low tool amount. And something I want to point out too on the cooler is this uh, surface is very, very shiny. Like, in just the right uh, light, you can see some arcing from like a, you know, a circular cutout or something. But for the most part, it's very smooth. And we have useless uh, FET here. And it's not a mirror finish at all. You can uh, see him semi in the... Uh, reflection, but it's it's not a perfect surface, but for the most part it's really good machining there, so hopefully that will provide a good mating surface for the card. And I'm not going to actually tape this whole thing about putting it together. Uh, it'll be fast forward through here, so um, we will, of course, delve into the actual uh, stats of the card uh, when we put this back into the case. And we're going to want to start by removing all the screws on the back side of the card here. Um, you can leave the GPU retention screws in for this first moment. And we still have a couple more screws on the end here, and that should be everything to get this card, this cooler, off here. It's a kind of a sticky thing because your thermal pads have some uh, adhesion to them, and then you still have the fan hook to the board on the end. So be sure to take that off and don't just try pulling it off of everything. Okay. So you see um, that's not too bad of a thermal grease job I did the other day, but like you can see, we have the thermal pads that are uh, left a residue on the chips here, so that's kind of a pain, but hey, we gotta do uh, what we gotta do. We have a 
just a look at the stock cooler. It's pretty plain on the inside, really. We just have the, the exposed copper bit there for right on the GPU. I have a couple of dust bunnies in here, which I don't know, I didn't catch the other day when I opened this up. But otherwise, it's pretty mundane looking. It's really heavy. There's uh, quite a bit going on behind the scenes in here, so most of the weight of the cards from here, so that's kind of a relief. Actually, let's see. We have a... What kind of difference do we have here? Well, this one is lighter, too. I know it says in the directions not to transport the computer with the cooler on there, but hey, it seems to be a better weight issue compared to the stock one. And uh, here we'll be fast forwarding again. Uh, we got some cleaning to do and uh, be sure, you know, use actual thermal grease remover. Um, I don't really know what kind of home remedies there are for that, but it's not something I really want to chance at all. And pretty old school computer builder trick is we have coffee filters for cleaning here since they're supposed to be lint free and they're really cheap and if you're a nerd you probably have plenty of coffee so it'll, it's uh, something readily available for most people. One of the biggest reasons why I'm not uh, like an Arctic Silver as much as I used to is well, this exposed circuitry around your processor now because it, it does have pulverized silver in the material. Uh, so it could, uh, while not being con it, it does have some capacitance issues, so you still could mess up your board if you don't get this stuff all the way off. I will definitely say, though, their Arcticlean compound for this kind of work is awesome. Like it does not take but just a few scrubs to get this whole thermal padding off. One of the things I did notice though with the stock cooler is these chips also have uh, contacts for the thermal pads. I'm not sure I recall with this Zalman one that there is a cooling solution for that, but I guess we'll see when we get to that point. A lot of this stuff is even taking off the marker from the capacitors back here. Something uh, that I was commenting on earlier, yeah, the directions are kind of wrong on this, maybe. Um, I mean, there are obviously eight chips of RAM here, but uh, it only asks for seven because you're supposed to use this Type A here to contact this other chip, which I'm not sure I cleaned. Um, so, I don't know, maybe it's for a uh, different model card, not sure, but hey, it's pretty cool red anodized heat sink, so definitely could hold on to that and use it for something else.
This could also be a difference between the various models reference cards. This uh, Type B or whatever heat sinks, they, they're like the exact size of the RAM chips, but this one, I guess, uh, doesn't matter as much, but it overlaps in several dimensions, so that's kind of weird, but okay. And now with the RAM chips completely clean, we should install the heat sinks so we can move on to the GPU's cooler. And there's a cure time. It says with these that after 24 hours, you'll have hit 90% uh, of the adhesion capabilities. So uh, it's not something that's uh, going to be immediate. So don't I don't see why you would need to, but don't go stressing on these parts after they're installed for a while. With all the heat sinks installed, it's time to use about a rice grain size uh, drop of thermal grease on the GPU's diet itself. At this point, you're going to want to install the standoffs for the GPU's cooler and prep its surface if you haven't done so already. And for some final words before we look at the performance numbers of this GPU cooler, as you can see in this picture on the right hand portion, the GPU's cooler overhangs the chip's heat sinks, and it's a really close fit. Uh, in my system with the fans uh, blowing, there was a resonance formed uh, about every four or five seconds. It would rattle against the heat sink on the lower part of the board. Um, the Another big problem was the red shroud that's over the fans. While it looks cool and everything, uh, I couldn't get that to work with the fan rubbing earlier. The fan actually was rubbing on the fins of the, the heat sink itself, so I put a credit card thickness uh, piece of plastic underneath the hubs of the fans to lift it up above the fins, but just that much higher made the fan strike the shroud so it was kind of we couldn't win for losing with that so I had to run without the shroud in, uh, included anymore um, but for performance values in particular the cooler is quite uh, well optimized for this system and I have both the values in the old case and in the new case just so for those not sure, you can see how the case itself even matters with the cooling of components internally. What we see here is uh, just in the old NZ XT Apollo case with the Zalman cooling system, we are about almost 20 degrees cooler than what the idle temperature is for the stock cooler and in Celsius, and it's a huge drop in temperature, and that's important since with my setup the stock cooler was actually hitting throttle uh, thermal throttling limits so it would have technically got hotter than that at its uh, max temperature but it shuts itself down you know uh, declocks itself so it doesn't damage so that's just for internal temperatures that's great improvement in the old case and just looking at the NZXT M59 we have at full 100% GPU usage a drop of 3 Celsius which is pretty good like it's 3 more Celsius and this case is actually cheaper than the older one um, and a 1 degree Celsius drop over the idle temperature and an important number for those of you who would like to get into the world of overclocking um, in the M59, I overclocked the card. I, of course, was never going to do that in the old Apollo case with the old uh, stock cooler on it. And 
I was able to manage to get this card up to uh, one gigahertz core. I mean, it's normally 850 megahertz dot, so a pretty big jump there. Uh, the RAM is just slightly faster. It's you don't really get much performance uh, overclocking the RAM compared to the core anyway, and the the temperature or the uh, the voltage is uh, 0.1 volt higher. Uh, with that. Overclock, we are seeing a max temperature at full utilization at 55 degrees Celsius. And of course, idle is still the temp same temperature as without overclock since it throttles itself to not lose power. So uh, we're still well under the limits of, you know, the, the thermal throttling limits for this card. So just taking that into consideration, it's we're we're still well ahead of where we were to begin with, and now have a faster card uh, to boot. So just one final words on this is definitely if you have a card in this family, this is something to look at if you're not going to do uh, extreme cooling like a water cooling block on the card. Um, and definitely look at Zalman's website since the few cards I listed in the beginning that this fits is what it fit when it came out from a few reviews I've read online. It actually will fit some of the newer generation cards too, so it could still uh, be a great benefit for those looking to cool their cards off. And sorry for the long video, and thanks for sticking through with this, but this was pretty much an important first step uh, for my channels considering I can't really do gameplay videos if my card is not operating in a very efficient way. So uh, definitely stick around. We'll have more videos coming out, hardware and uh, gaming. So thanks again.